45 fucking minutes we finally am able to get she my shit together after my promise is recording up. this time well it was is always it? recording last time it uh, just what happened last time shay hi well, guys first of all hi guys welcome to 30 welcome to 30 you're gonna get a whole episode this time because i won't be crying into my computer yeah last week we had a little technical difficulty me I, i'll take full blame um for <laughs> it that was me uh yeah i it was quite hilarious i i had just wasn't um i should not have put how do i want to describe this um i essentially gonna be a nerd for a minute but i was didn't put all like the audio onto the computer so it was sticking out like on a different like hard drive essentially so i was working off the hard drive like a stupid little idiot that i am and i know better can't be working off that hard drive no not uh uh I don't know what that means, it's, but it's, it's, don't. It's fine. And uh, it pretty much, my computer, I, I knocked it because I don't have the most expensive equipment, and it knocked it loose, and my program freaked out, told me it was going to shut down, and it did, and then I pulled everything back up. Everything was fine, except your part, so like my microphone was working, so I, I essentially have the whole episode of, on, of my mic and you can hear mm. yourself in the background but it just sounds like i put you in the corner or something and like <laughs> make comments well, other than did. while i talk about pop culture and then but when i put back like to look at your track just like your own like little microphone track it had recorded like because the whole like the last segment was like an hour long so it recorded the last five seconds of you going uh bye bye for an hour and it, there was it was just stuck on repeat for a fucking hour i didn't obviously listen to it for an hour but i was laughing so hard because like of course of Why course this would happen to that? Uh, i don't know but it's definitely my new <laughs> mantra for everything in my uh, life bye bye yep um i listened to an hour it was of, like <laughs> a brief file mire that's literally like I'm jurassic park shay i'm it is actually not uh uh-uh, uh but it was you will not get in here yeah uh uh-uh. uh uh-uh. It was pretty funny. I'll have to have you listen to uh, it. Bye bye. I couldn't figure out how to play it back. So yeah, it was, it was a treat. Let At me just tell you, that, that was a comedic relief. Maybe it was after but, you cried for a little while. I did, but it was fine. I just didn't have to research anything this time. <laughs> she go. She just gonna redo it. So I'm gonna have to listen to this shit again. All over again. No, I loved again. it. It was. It's per- a good one. It was a pretty good one. What so, is it? Pop culture. It's pop culture. And you when you. Uh, I rolled last week. You will, yeah. We, well, both, we did. both rolled because I didn't know that this well, was we're skipping gonna happen. Shows. We're gonna skip mine. It was cooking anyway, so you were gonna talk a lot. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't do that. I had a weird, busy, crazy. So it was good, week. and it was yeah. It was it was Fourth of July. Oh, well, yeah. What'd you do for your Fourth of July? I had some friends over, and we cooked burgers and hot dogs and fucking made potato salad and coleslaw. Oh, nice! I made my favorite fucking kava recipe that is literally the best kava recipe ever um you can't go wrong but i made cobbler. cherry cobbler because you like to pop them cherries, cherries are real good right now everything i feel like is good right now yes oh yeah it's not that's so incorrect some most of the things the food some of it a lot of it there's lots of things that are getting that are delicious good. yeah can't wait for tomatoes to come in from the farms mm-hmm. which they kind of are anyway so stop had people Sorry. over. We have a sweet view of the um, fireworks in Windsor, Colorado, because we live behind the lake. Oh, hey. And there's no one, hey, hey, like hey. no houses behind Sorry, us right now. Yeah. So we just have a front row view. Oh, hey, Colonel, just yeah, moving I don't know your tail. Why he's being kind of a closer. weirdo? <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Well, that's nice. Uh, yeah. And then that that's was... how you celebrated America's finest yeah. birthday. The finest birthday, yes. Besides Jesus's. Oh, that is true. Did you... Did, never mind. I'm not going to say that. Okay. What? No, it's fine. Anyway, how was your 4th of July? What did you do? Oh, man. I had a good time. I went on my friend's boat, Miss Rosie. Oh, God. That's and awesome. And Nate's. Let's, I'll just give credit where it's due. Um, <laughs> we just show up. It's fine. Um, yeah, so it was really nice. I, I drank a tooth? lot of White Claw. I was that bitch. I was that oh. basic bitch out there on the water. 
I'm sure you weren't the only one. Sure wasn't. I'm like, it's like, it's water. It's sparkling water. So I'm hydrating as I'm drinking. So it's fine. Um, And there's no sugar. And there's no sugar. It's perfect. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So we just hung out in the water for a little bit. And then I went home. And I was going to come to your house. But then I promptly passed out, I think, at at like 5 o'clock and had like a fat fucking nap. And then I... uh, It lingered to the evening. It did. So I just didn't go anywhere. And then I went to the Springs this weekend to go to Manitou. Oh, fun. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you do the incline yet? (laughs) Fuck no. We'll do that together. We have to think of a field trip. Oh, yeah. That's coming up. It's our 18th episode. Yes. Also, guys, the last episode we gave a shout out at the end to give us some ideas if you guys had any thoughts like what would be kind of a fun field trip for us to go on but sadly obviously i you, why did you hear that shay i don't want to talk about it just kidding we god know. damn it you stupid just bitch. gonna fucking just kidding. anyway so just we're, kidding look, okay, you're not so it kind of goes in part so we were drinking greyhounds last week so mm-hmm. because we're kind of redoing this week i figured we should stay with the the, the, the dog theme, theme yeah. whatever mm-hmm. so um what are we drinking? Today we're drinking a chihuahua. It was supposed to be a salty chihuahua, but I don't like salt on the rim. And honestly. And Brie also forgot to put the salt on the rim before she put the drink. Which I'm in kind of glass. I'm glad she forgot. And honestly, I I related to I relate to this drink because I was a very salty chihuahua last Sweet. week when I was dealing with this shit. <laughs> I was so upset. I was so angry. Ugh. Anyway. Anyway, it's over I now. We're recording. biting ankles. It was really, really rough. Yeah, <laughs> she would always like to do that. She was just shaking in place. Yep, just peeing in little puddles on the floor because I was nervous. Her eyes were really buggy. Yep, it was really <laughs> upsetting. And I had this high pe- pitch shrill. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> See, my cat ran away from me. Okay. You're a chihuahua. I'm a chihuahua. Um, yeah, so we're drinking. Well, really, it's They're also just a the Paloma, chihuahuas. basically, too. Yeah. So it's uh, grapefruit, tequila, a little lime. Mm-hmm. It's good, and though. grapefruit. And it's delicious. It's fucking refreshing. Lots of tequila in it there. Is. I just love grapefruit drinks. You can't go wrong with them. No. Yeah. You can't. Um, but yeah, so last week we talked about how we're going on a field trip soon. And yeah. we want you guys to suggest some things if you have any suggestions. Yeah. On places near us, not like yeah. we can't fly anywhere yet. We can't go to Greece, you guys. Not okay. yet. But if you guys want to sponsor us. At the end of my ish at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. If you want to sponsor our trip, if you guys want to send us somewhere, that'd be <laughs> fine. <laughs> it'd be like make a so wish foundation. <laughs> <laughs> or like when you won like the fucking like you're going to go to Universal Studios. Like when you won like Legends of the Hidden Temple and you're like, we're 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 Can already we but we're already here. Why? How, how is that a treat? <laughs> um, Speaking of legends, we, we stood in line for 45 hours. Um, Legends of the Hidden, Hidden Temple was sweet. I would was, stand in line all day. I would have. I would go and do that. I would fail. Like I would like. Get I would be lost. A barracuda any fucking day. Dude, I wanted to be the purple jaguars. Oh, uh, what were the barracudas? The teal, teal? orange monkeys. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. The what else was there? <laughs> there was, was the iguanas. I don't know what color they the were. Greens. The green iguanas. Like the green iguanas. Turquoise. The, the barracudas. And anyway, speaking of <laughs> Legends of the Hidden Temple, <laughs> there it is. Double wasn't Double Dare like in Fort Collins like the it other hasn't day? come yet. So that will definitely be our field trip. It's gonna you be guys, in here in November. Double fucking Dare. Who remembers that show? Mm-hmm. Which also reminds me of what 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 what, what would you do? Remember what would you do? I remember Mark Summers, but I don't. I don't. I don't think I watched that religiously. They and always I, like pulled questions and stuff out of like a giant nose. Oh, I thought that was Double Dare. Oh, fuck. Maybe yeah. Was Mark Summers double. is Double Dare. Uh, no, Mark Summers does What Would You Do, but they must not pull. They had the big eye. It was the big eye in What Would You Do, and there's a big nose in Double Dare. You're yeah. right. Anywho, uh, what, did, what, are you, what are you talking about, pop culture? Uh, yep. Same thing as last week, because I'm an idiot, but it's fine. Um, what? Um, how was your week besides the 4th of July? Was it, Did anything exciting happen? Oh, um, no. I don't know why I'm interviewing like this. It's only because I'm being preemptive because I'm going to talk about what oh, I yeah, did today. Oh, yeah, there's... Um, yeah, I did... Where are my little notes? You made notes for yourself? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I want to talk about something. I forgot what it was, but I don't know where well, it is. Well, you're getting really formal with this podcast. Bitch, <laughs> we got to get this shit going. Well, 
Okay. I'm just kidding. Not with notes. Anyway. Well, I mean, you um, can. I'm not going to bash you because you're reading notes. Yeah. I mean, I kind of am, but. I'm not. I don't even know where I wrote them. <laughs> I talked to my phone. If that isn't 30, I don't know it. what is. Yeah. I there don't was know important where things I didn't remember, phone. but I don't remember where I put them. So it'll be fine. Yeah. Nothing exciting happened this week except that just, you know, trekking along on the road of life. That's a good trek, though. Yeah. I didn't have any kids camps last week, though. Are you feeling blue about that? Um, No, I'm good, actually. Oh, okay. So you have a good little But today I had a great cooking class with the children. Oh, what did you do? I had a full class of 16, 17, actually. Oh, that's pretty fucking good. And so this week we're doing France and Italy. So um, the first two days we do French food and the second two days we the second two days. The second two days. The second two days. God, we're not going to make it to the second segment this well, time. No. The last two days are Italy. Today we made ratatouille. Ooh. Crepes. Was there a mouse? Mm, yeah. Okay. I let him run around. He was under my chef's hat. I was going to say he was cooking the entire Little time. Little Remy. Um, so they made ratatouille and crepes and homemade Nutella. Mm. Oh, shit. That's awesome. And Chantilly cream. Mm. And what else did they How make? How old are these kids? 10 to 15. Oh, good. And 17 of them. Good on that. And it was a good on a their really parents. great day. Despite thank you. my assistant Hashtag leaving early. And m- thank you, Master Chef. Having to tell the high school kids how to sweep again. Oh, well, you know what? It's good for their character. It is. But you know what I realized? Like, Kids nowadays are like fucking smart and with it, I feel like. Yeah. Well, for the most part, sometimes. Well, they have the whole world they, in their hand. Yeah, but they don't have they don't have any practical skills. They like don't learn them or something. Or at least the ones that I've been encountering, like, like not all the time. You're not it's talking like, about street smarts. You're just talking about like practical like, like book, human habits, like taking care of yourself skills. Yeah. Okay. That and it's probably a little street smart, they but they're book fucking, smart as fuck and they, they like, don't have any discipline. Yeah. It's just crazy to see it. I mean, I can't really say anything because I don't have kids of my own, but honestly. But they are like more... Um, they are more mature, I feel like, in a weird way to me. Yeah. They, like, uh, they talk more... I don't know. Like, the shit they talk about is like shit I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, I'm again, like, it's, wait, in, it's, it's in their th- hand. Not 13-year-olds, but like... But, but they, like, they 16, like to... Um, I've noticed that like with my cousin. She'll like try and... Um, it's like she she talks like really really well, mm-hmm. and she speaks about the topics that we speak about mm-hmm. because it's in her face all all the time, obviously, and they have yeah. social media and all that stuff. But it's not like it's exactly. like it, it, there are true. other people's opinions, kind of, and she's just trying to like kind of yeah. You, it's like you're kind of watching them formulate where, where their opinion lines. So it's like you can't lie, so you kind of are seeing them formulate that mm-hmm. in their brain. They're but like, they're definitely doing it earlier than I ever did it. Yeah, for me sure. Too. Exactly. They're way more socially so, aware than I ever was. Right. Well, not that even more and probably now. I know. But, I'm like, wow, you're way more cultured than me. Yeah. But yeah. just like, I don't know. So that's good. But also I feel like it's like you need just to know how to sweep a fucking floor. You need some more common sense a little bit or just mm-hmm. like it's just like nothing's a big deal either. Well, that is. I mean, they're also yeah. high school kids. They probably don't want to do anything, but no, I don't know. Anyway, it's yeah. just that's something I've noticed, and now that I'm thirty, I can say that because I'm like the young children, the whippersnappers, those teenagers. Them they don't know how to sweep a goddamn floor. Yeah, I don't know why at thirty we sound like we're ninety five, but it's fine. Arr, my back. <laughs> Actually, yeah, my fucking back too. Yeah, I got adjusted today, and I'm stiff as a fucking board. Like not adjusted. like the game though. Not light as a feather anymore either. I don't want to ever play that. That'll invite the spirits. Oh, it didn't Speaking really. Speaking of spirits, it. I rolled paranormal. Sweet. Yeah, oh. We'll talk about some fucking spirits. Oh, yeah, just like the spirits we be Let's drinking. Say the prayer to anoint the house so that we don't encounter anything. Dear in ghost, bubble. stay the fuck out. The end. We don't want you here. We don't need you Mm-mm. here. We're just gonna talk about you. I like how we're talking like this. Ew. It makes my heart happy. Good. I got a pretty mouth. Um, you got a pretty mouth. What's that from Zombieland? 
No, that one's from. It's not from. Oh, maybe he quotes that in Zombieland. I think he probably. quotes it in Zombieland. Yeah. I don't know exactly what movie it's from. But anyway, so. Anyway, you think I have a pretty mouth. So let's get into it. Shall we? Just kidding. didn't even ask for my, about my day. Oh my God. I, I just literally kidding. am the fucking worst. It's only, I'm only, I wouldn't even give a shit. Selfish pig. I, <laughs> What's your I, day? I wouldn't like? have even said anything, but it's. Um, so I put my two weeks in today. What? <laughs> I know. Shame! I know. I wanted that reaction. What a fucking bitch I am! <laughs> I know. Time out. I'm gonna give you a hug. Oh, I didn't tell you because I wanted the genuine reaction. <laughs> that is fucking exciting. I know. How I do you know. Feel? What did they say? I'm fucking terrified, but I was like, you know what? After our conversation last week, which I heavily edited, but you guys heard most of it. Um, <laughs> and it might have gotten deleted. <laughs> yeah. No, that one did because or- it was in the front. Oh. It was when we were talking. Mm. Um, freehand oh, we were talking about our midlife crisis yes we were and so yeah i just i decided that i'm gonna jump and i mean obviously it's not that i'm gonna be doing this podcast full time because that we still need some work on that yeah but um in the interim i'm going to so i can focus more on the podcast but so i can be here so i don't have to like fucking do the fucking hour commute one way which people have way worse commutes 1000 percent. but for me it wasn't worth it because i wasn't having a life so like i explained last week so i'm gonna do massage again i'm going yeah. to um i'll probably just i'll be doing my own like freelance video editing probably not a whole lot as like as much as i want to yet but it'll it'll come yeah. as to come i am so terrified i need like baby powder on my asshole like 24 7 but it'll <laughs> be fine um <laughs> Because it's, yeah, it was a secure fucking paycheck every two weeks, but I can't be afraid to fail, and I can't be afraid to be, like, uncomfortable, and I'm going to be real uncomfortable. So, um, yeah. probably after the next couple of weeks, we'll probably be either drinking beer or White Claw to mm-hmm. save on finances. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, so, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'll be working downtown, so I'm going to be working, like, literally, like, 16 blocks away, and it's going to be nice. So, I'm jumping and... Just, that's good yeah that's so exciting i'm so proud of you thanks boo boo and it's gonna be fucking it's gonna be fun it's gonna be i'm hard. terrified it's gonna be great it's gonna be hard it's gonna be great though it's gonna be it's gonna be every i need needed. i need to be pushed i need to be uncomfortable in order to like yeah be better not just like and it doesn't have to do with this podcast but it just you know just just with life. just in general just like with i want to like be like the best like video editor that i can be and I love I love that aspect so but I'm not gonna get it where I was working so yeah even though I love the people that I that were there but I needed to just spread my little wings and fly like an eagle to like the sea um little yeah to the sea do they Is fly to they the say? sea no what's that song oh yeah fly like an eagle to, to the, the sea. sea that's what sh- what sh- I'm they should bad say to the trees uh, are you though through the trees <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Yes. Wow. Clearly. Um, yeah, so that was that was my that was my day. I almost chickened out and I didn't but I didn't I was like, I just gotta bite the bullet. So I'm scared, but it's gonna be if it's gonna be okay. Okay, yes. good. But he wished me well and he was very sad to see me go. Oh, that's because you're a great employee, Shane. Yes. I'm a good little worker, B. You're a really good And then next lady. week or after uh after I leave, he'll replace me in two days and forget about me. And that's okay. No, it's okay. He'll never forget about it. It's okay. Just be like, can I just get some shrooms before life. I leave for yeah. my research on psychedelica since I was... Since I pretty much uh, like... I edited the show. Yes. No. We had like three other editors on it. It was awesome. That's sweet. They were awesome. Anyway. So, yeah. That was my week. So What if they just gave you, guys you shrooms get... on your last day and they're like, here's no. your last day, no. bitch. No. Edit some videos. Edit some videos. It'll be amazing. And fly to the sea. sea. <laughs> 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 to the sea. But um, psh- All right. Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. So, yeah. We'll just see. Oh, you yeah. guys will get to hear me just sometimes be happy and sometimes just be crying going, I'm eating ramen for the seventh day and I'm 33 oh, fucking fine. years old. Oh, it's fine. Me and Chris old. eat a lot of spaghetti. Yeah, there you go. So I'm 33 and I'm 
eaten. Like I'm going backwards, but I'm not going backwards. But we're going keep, forwards. We're going forwards. It's all good. So that was my little thing for the week. I'm just going to trust and work my little ass off and it's going to be fine. Hashtag trust. Hashtag trust. Is your cat. Is that you? That's I me. I thought that was your cat, but it was your foot. It was just my foot. I thought your cat was attacking I just my need leg. comfort. Shay. Just kidding. It's fine. Okay. I'll hold your hand. You'll hold my hand. It's fine. Okay. Are we ready to jump into this thing? Oh, let's dive. So we just want to take a minute to tell you a little bit about Anchor, who hosts our podcast for us. And guess what? It's free, guys. So Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast, and they give you everything you need in one place, again, for free. Everyone likes free stuff. And you can use it right from your phone or computer. Even your phone, guys. We use our phones for everything. And now you can make a podcast on it. Absolutely. And they have like this creation tool, which is really awesome. Um, so even if you, you don't need like, any fancy equipment or anything like that, if you just got a little mic and a little thought in your brain, it has a little creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds terrific. And they'll distribute your podcast for you absolutely for free as well. So it can be heard everywhere. Super painless. Um, it'll go from Spotify to Apple Podcasts to Google Podcasts and much more. And the best part, guys, you can easily make money from your podcast, which is what we're doing right now. Right now. Um, so if you guys want to start a podcast, you totally can. Just download the Anchor button. Um, if you're not already listening to us on Anchor, again, it's free. And Did we say it was free? It's free. Yeah. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started on your podcast today. And we're going again. And I told on. you this time. Yeah. Okay, good. We're recording? We're recording. I'm Loud and live. proud. I'm live. You're live. You're so live. I am actually alive. Yeah, you're super live right now. Well, let's talk about the dead. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Are you an evil Santa Claus? What is happening? Maybe. Maybe. Um. So today on um, Paranormal yes. segment. Yep. Uh. I'm going to be talking about Lorraine and Ed Warren. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, and if you guys don't know who these two motherfuckers are, they crazy. They're not crazy, but they've seen some crazy ass shit. Um, they've been considered America's most distinguished experts on the subject of spirits and demonology for over 50 years. Right. Um, so... Which, have you ever seen, like, pictures of them, like, when they were first starting? I feel like they were, like, the same age. <laughs> yeah, they It's did. weird. They are the same age. No. Oh, no, wait, I meant, like, oh. it just seems like they've always like, been, like, old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, There's Steve, a, it's like Steve Martin. Like, yeah, like, he's just, always looked. You just always look like you're, like, a 50-age, middle-aged man. 50-age, yeah. middle-aged. 50-age, fi- middle-aged. 50-year-old 50 man. Yeah. Um... Yeah, they pretty much did stay yes. the same. Probably because they just were scared a lot. Anyway, go on. They just scared their skin so tight. They scared it so taunt. Um, so some of the cases that they um, investigated included and like found proof of uh, mm-hmm. having of happening um, were mean priests becoming possessed, cases where people were physically attacked by spirits, cases where unworldly entities manifest and then preside in homes, um, cases where time is violated and the physical environment is completely rearranged, mm. um, cases where spirits don't just haunt a house, they visibly tear it apart. Ew. Yeah. Gross. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Keep that shit outside. Yeah. I'm just Maybe telling talk about the this. universe right now. Let's talk back on Ed and Lorraine. Okay. So Ed was a demonologist. Right. Lorraine was a trance medium. Ooh. So a trance medium is someone who gives, uh, or they go into hypnotic state to bring messages from either deceased loved ones or other guides and ascended masters. Yes. Was the dictionary definition. That all sounds familiar. Or I don't know. Because <laughs> I do that on my off time. Well, <laughs> I guess to like acquire more funds for myself. So I can buy my cat's food. I'm going to just become a demonologist and <laughs> talk to Sid and Masters. You could. You got a mic and yeah. some earphones. Mm-hmm. Um, so from ages 5 to 12, Ed Warren grew up in a haunted house in Connecticut. Um, he said that his father, who was a police officer at the time, would often say 
There, there's a logical reason for everything that happens in this house, but he never came up with a logical reason for what was going on in their home. Um, he oh. said his family would all go to bed and just around two to three o'clock in the morning. Many times I would hear the closet door beginning to open up. At first, I'd look into that closet and see only shapeless darkness. Then slowly I'd start to see a light beginning to form and it would morph into like a ball shape, sort of like a basketball. And then I'd begin to see a face in that ball. The This is called a ghost gobule. And in that gobule was a face, a face of an old woman. She was not looking at all pleasant, he said. What the fuck? The glob, the globule. I think I'm saying that right. It's a ghost nope. That's what I'm going to call that. Yeah, a no. ghost nope. Nope, nope. Bye bye. Uh, bye. Uh, bye bye. Yeah, that's a, that one. Um, so that would then come out into my bedroom and then accompanied by an au- by audible footsteps and heavy breathing. The oh, room would become chills. icy cold, an unnatural cold, a psychic cold. And we're still standing in the room. And he's saying, he's like, and then I'm saying to myself, Ed, there's a logical reason for everything. But by that time, I was out of the bed and right between my mother and father in their bed. No fucking shit. Yeah, fuck that shit. So that's Ed Warren's background. That's so Lorraine Warren. Good reason to go check in the local Motel 6. Yeah. Bye bye. Um, Lorraine Warren said that ever since she was about seven or eight years old, she could see auras around people Mm -hmm. and she was scared if she told her parents that, um, they think that she was crazy. So she kept her powers to herself. That's fair. Honestly, that's what a lot of kids do. Wait, and what year was she born? How are you not talking about 1960, or, I don't know, hold on really quick. No, because this, because those, the Omniville horrors happen like. In, in the seventies or seventies, so she had to be born oh, yeah. in like she the thirties. Yeah, thirties. Okay, I'm just curious. Anyway, go on. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I, oh look, hold on. You don't have to. It's fine. Oh, okay, I can't. So yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. So yeah, that was Lorraine's little background. So when Ed Warren was 16 years old, he worked as an usher at the Colonial Theater in Connecticut, and that's where he met Lorraine. So cute. Oh, that's cute. Um, I'd see Lorraine coming in and we'd start talking and then we became friends. I was 16 at the time and she was 16. So they were the same age, Shay, like I said earlier. <gasps> no, that's not what you were talking about. <laughs> um, And then he said, um, one night I walked her home and asked her for a date. And that's how it all got started. 16. Oh, that's cute. And they fucking saw the craziest fucking shit anyone could ever imagine together. <sighs> I think they had a strong bond for each other because no shit. They probably fucking needed that. Gross. So not gross Ed, other than the relationship, but just gross that yeah. they're going to encounter all this shit. Anyway, yeah. go on. Um they're also both like super Catholic, just Really? So uh, they they were always Mhm. Hmm. And they still are. And they still, like, say, like, yeah. Anyways, yeah, they're super Catholic. Uber Caths. Mm-hmm. Anywho, so when Ed was Ed was 17, he joined the Navy. But four months later, his ship sank in the North Atlantic, and he was home for a 30-day survivor's leave after that. Just and 30 during, days. Yeah, 30 days. But during that time, he got married to Lorraine. Oh. And then he... um. After he went back to the war and then once he returned after World War II, he and Lorraine had a daughter. Um, and then Ed went ended up going to Perry Art School, which is a subsidiary of Yale. And he went there for two years and started doing art. And like that was his like first his love. He loved doing that. Nice. What kind and of art? S- Macaroni and cheese macrame? It was. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was shadow art. It was shadow art. Perfect. Um. So then he started selling his art and they um, started to make a living off of him selling his art. Oh, he was like, we are making a fantastic living selling the paintings for fabulous prices. Three dollars, four dollars. Yes. But you've got to remember one thing. Hot dogs were a dime. Hamburgers were a dime. The theater was a quarter. So. So it was a pretty. When you made five dollars on a painting, you were doing pretty good. Yeah. So put it in perspective, which is still crazy. Four dollars, sweet. I can't even buy like a fucking like dinner for one at Noodles and Company for that. Yes, you can. <laughs> can't. So, um, but he was always interested in like haunted houses and always like because yeah. he grew up in one, he just wanted to see if like because there wasn't really a lot 
of people talking about all that, you know, like they are now. Right. So he was really interested in haunted houses and Lorraine never really like was, but she, he was like, he always wanted to like go to him. So he, but because they were kids, like people didn't just like let him in. He would like hear about haunted houses or something. And, um, so he said he'd go out in the middle of the road where he could see, um, so he, this was like he'd find these haunted houses and then he would do this to be able to get into the haunted houses. So he'd go out in the middle of the road and he'd start to sketch the house. Um, and you'd, he said you'd see the curtains going back and forth. What's that kid doing, they would be thinking. Um, I would do a really nice sketch of the house with ghosts coming out of it and I'd give it to Lorraine. She'd go knock on the door and with her Irish personality, she'd say... Oh, my husband loves to sketch and paint haunted house and paint haunted houses, and he made this for you. I made it special for them, he said. And through the paintings at the and through those paintings, that's how they got themselves in the haunted houses and talked to the Honestly, homeowners one on one. They sound like fucking creep boats. If you really think about how they were getting into these houses, they sound like mm. if anybody came up to your door and be like, "Hey, I sketched a sketch of your house. Can I come inside and look at it?" I'd be like, that's "Get up! I'm calling nine one one right now." Get out of here. That's very true. I think they're cute. And it's a cute little love story of weird creepiness. I'm just all about stranger danger. It's a Tim Burton love story. Well, kind of, actually. But still. Come on. Tim Burton couples are weird. Edward their hands and whatever Winona Ryder's character was called. What was her name? Fucking. What was Wednesday? it? Wednesday? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, that's it. In Beetlejuice? No, that was Lydia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was also that character. No, she was the woman that... Oh, and Adam's... N- no, no. Not... God damn Edward it. Scissorhands. Sorry. Johnny not Depp. Adam. I don't remember It was like name. his big breakout role. She was in it? Yeah, she was the love interest. Oh, yeah. She was weird as fuck. Yeah, she was just all quiet and... It was Diana West was her mom and... That movie's weird and good Ellen Arkin fuck. was his... her dad oh yeah it was, I haven't it was seen a good little cast in so long anyway sorry anyways edward scissorhands six. not edward scissorhands ed <laughs> warren <laughs> ed warren <laughs> um basically he just wanted to like i said he wanted to see um if the same things happened to the families that he was mm-hmm. in these haunted houses yeah um and ed actually talks about how he was like the biggest skeptic okay of all. He said, you couldn't tell us that your house is haunted and get away with it because I'm the biggest skeptic going. I have to see it. I have to hear it. And I have to feel it with a physical sense. And so he isn't like his wife where she. She's like, I believe it. Yeah, she believes it. And also she can like, she's kind of a medium. So like she can see things, but he can't. He doesn't have that. capability, That special. Right. Gift. Um, So they did use. They not only like when they went into houses, they not only had Lorraine, but they also used other mediums and clairvoyance when they went into the homes to like that was like their first step in making sure that there was a like there was actually something going on. It wasn't just people trying to like pull a hoax on them or something. So. um, So the mediums and clairvoyance. um, He said they were very necessary because they tell us immediately if something's there because of. The spirits are drawn to the mediums and the clairvoyant people. Right. Um, like a moth to a flame, he said. Like a moth and to a flame. I don't know if you know any clairvoyant people, but I do, and I think it's fucking crazy. I do. Um It's weird. And it's like they just Not like, in a bad they, way. It's just a no, it's, it's just insane. Like yeah. I don't know how I could handle I don't know. If I, I wouldn't be able that. to. It would bother the hell out of me. But it I would. do I can like feel them for sure. I can feel when they're around. I just don't talk to them because I don't I don't, I don't want to do that. Number one, I don't think I really actually could. Yeah. And number two, I'm like, I, it creeps me out enough that I can kind of feel them when they're around me. And I'm like, I'm not about that life. No, no, no. No. Um, so Ed could go into a building for a month and not know if something was really there. He could interview the people and maybe through um, his knowledge could tell if something was there. But the clairvoyant is the draw, he always said. Okay. So... um. He would take the clairvoyants into the house one at a time. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't know anything about the case, et cetera, like that. Right. And if they tell me the same thing, that they see a woman spirit in a certain room or a man or a child, then I know we're on the right track. So if they all say the same thing, then he's like, okay, there's something here. Okay. That's Um, a good idea. I mean, that's a good thought. Yeah. And so 
they also have scientists that works with them and they and he's talks about how he thinks theologically and scientifically so he like is a crazy catholic but like he knows that like right. these ghosts are like just proof more proof of like the existence of right everything a b c or d that talks that they talk about in the bible or whatever he said satan's um, handbook no i'm just kidding so in 1952 um, Warren and Ed founded a New England Society for Psychic Research. Um, and at first, their goal was just to investigate hauntings. And then in 1965, um, the Warrens went into a home where a spirit of a little girl named Cynthia was. And they listened to her coming through a deep trance medium. And she was um, looking for her mom. Mm. And so Ed was like, this is horrible. Poor baby. Um, he's like, this little child is earthbound. She's looking for her mother constantly day in and day out. And how do right. I help this child? Um, and so from then on, it wasn't just it's like little foot. It was mother. Mother. Where are you, mother? She Aww. just snuggles in a big footprint. Ugh. I need your mom, little foot. Fucking tree stars. Anyway, go on. I love them. So it was no long after this, it was no longer just about experiencing the hauntings. And now now the Warrens wanted to help like mm-hmm. the people and the spirits, obviously. Mm-hmm. Now, if they if they could. Yeah. Some of the spirits don't want to be helped. No. That's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. Um, Darn tootin. Spookin. Darn s- spookin. Um, so they also they so they found the psychic the Society for Psychic Research. It still hmm. exists today. Um, and they also have an, a whole occult museum in their home. Um, it's adorned with satanic objects and demonic artifacts from their findings. Yeah, and they're fucking basement. Some of them are in their basement of their Disgusting. home. Disgusting. Um, I know so that much. Cool. Which can you imagine as like a little kid? No, not even like a little kid, like a kid, like just starting like to do like sleepovers and stuff with your friends and you're not paying attention. And I'm sure no. that I'm sure their parents, I'm sure her parents told her like, do not go in that fucking basement no. or you will go. I will, I will put you into the next life. Yeah. And yeah, but like, I can't imagine they stumble and they're like, yeah, we're going to go in there. And like, I feel they, like it wouldn't stay in the basement. No, that's what I thought that was so weird. But they said like, I think I've seen some of the movies, which I'm sure you'll talk about, but how they kind of put protection stuff around it's yeah. like but still can you imagine the energy in that house oh hell no, no. and also there's like youtubes of like people like going into it's like it keeping like a basement of spiders yeah like and then they're like no. none of them are gonna get out it's fine oh, fuck. them spiders gonna get out um it's a little worse than spiders no i don't know like spiders are pretty scary that's true but yeah she'll like there's a and it's, I think it's an A&E documentary, actually. And she, like, shows this, the guy, like, down in the basement. And, Ew. like, uh-uh. every time, she, like, there's signs everywhere that say, do not touch anything. Do right. not bump anything. Do right. not fucking, don't, don't touch. fucking do it. Or yeah. you're going to be fucked. Because some of the yeah. stuff still, like, it has supposedly bad has shit, some bad juju. shit. Like, I know they have that, that like, the Annabelle doll. And the Annabelle doll is, like, actually just, like, a Raggedy Ann doll. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'll talk to you. Oh, gross. It's disgusting. So they've even proved in a court of law in 1989, the year I was born, that a woman and her young child driven out of, that a woman and her young child were driven out of their house by ghosts. Um, And she lived in Hebron, Hebron, Connecticut. Oh. So the realtor that leased the woman the house um, was suing her for two thousand dollars because she was like, "I fucking need to get out of this fucking house." Right. So she called Ed Warren, or Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren. Yeah. Um, to be like, "Please help us." And she like begged them to go into the house and get evidence to prove that there are really ghosts, and they were able to prove that there were really ghosts in the house, which you don't hear about that a lot. No, you don't. But can you imagine? Like, <laughs> I just can't even imagine that. I mean, I kind of feel bad like for this. They had videos and fucking yeah. All sorts of shit. But I mean, at the same time, like, I totally get that, like, good for them to, for proving that and getting that poor woman out of that house. But, like, can you imagine that landlord going, like, you're fucking bananas. No. He probably knew some shit. Or that's probably true, too. But, or he didn't. Or he didn't. Or, yeah. He, and like, he just thought that he was just trying, she was just probably trying to break the lease. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> Damn. It's like, no, bitch. I'm paying you $2,000. I can't get that from But Casper. how much did he pay them? You know? How right. much did she end up paying them? Right. Anyway. So here's some of their high-profile cases. 
The first and most popular one is Amityville Horror, which mm-hmm. I'm sure you've seen that movie. It is based yep. on a true story. It's not completely true, but it's very close to what happened. Oh, yeah. So on November 13th, 1974, in the small town of Amityville, New York, Ronald DeFeo burst into Harry's bar and screamed that his parents had been shot and killed. The police discovered the bodies of six members of the DeFeo family. The father, the mother, and four of the five DeFeo children were found face down, shot in the back of their heads. Sick. Ronald claimed he wasn't home during the murders and had only discovered the bodies of his parents prior to arriving at Harry's bar. Okay. After police officers found a gun case for a point, a thirty-five. Sorry, I don't know how to fucking speak gun talk. I don't. A point three five caliber. It's one that goes boom boom. Um, Marlin rifle in Ronald's room. DeFeo confessed. Um, so after a lengthy trial, Ronald DeFeo was found guilty of the heinous murders of his family. He was sentenced to six consecutive sentences, but there has never been a solid explanation for how one person acting alone could take the lives of six family members in the dead of night, 3.15 a.m. Right. Um, and no one heard the shots being fired. Right. Because they were all face down, right? Mm-hmm. I've watched a couple documentaries on, on that um, murder, and it's they think that there's there was a theory that it was, because it's fascinating, because it's like, yeah, how did nobody get up, and how did nobody have any self-inflicting wounds? And it was like they all were just quiet in the bed, and like nobody heard one shot just go off because it was like one it wasn't like they moved or anything it was like they were all face down but they think that um because it's the only way they they can explain it even though i think robert defeo like now says like i it was a false confession confession they think that it was like this a sister that was helping him do it and then he ended up shooting her and then putting her in the bed which i'm like that still doesn't make any sense no. but go on um i know too much about murder Sorry. So though, so though it had only been 13 months since the DeFeo murders had occurred, George and Kathleen Lutz thought the Dutch colonial was a lovely home and a steal for eighty thousand dollars. Never blood expecting all over it. They'd leave it all behind. Twenty eight days later, was it really only twenty eight days? Yeah, wow. they were there for twenty eight days. Twenty eight days too long. And like, um, so before the Lutz family moved in. A Catholic priest um, blessed the family home. And as the priest made his way up the stairs to the second floor, entering the bedroom, which had formerly belonged to Mark and John DeFeo, um, he began sprinkling holy water, at which point an unseen voice told the priest, oh, that gives me get chills. out, oh, that gives me chills. which he hastily did. Yeah, he's like, All right, bye. And the priest never said anything about that. He nope. was just like, uh, just don't go in that room. <laughs> he was like, yeah, he was like, don't go like, don't have a someone, you know, live stay in that, in that room yeah. and live in that room. Right. Like, don't just, like, just, just be careful just, of that room. Yeah, just don't go in there. And so they made it a sewing room instead. Oh, perfect. So Good old sewing room. From the fa- very first night that they moved in, the family claimed they felt strange sensations. And then within days of... Within days of moving in, the family's personality had drastically changed and a bunch of arguments started happening. Um, Sick. Yeah. And so George, um, who's the dad, was plagued um, by a constant chill and spent all his time feeding the fireplace. Huh. He also noticed that um, noticed a change in his grooming habits and his and Kathy's health declined drastically in those 28 days. Change um, in his grooming habits like. Like, he just wouldn't fucking shower and do oh, anything. It wasn't he was like, just, he was like, I don't want to manscape anymore. <sighs> I won't <laughs> shave anymore. No. So, the Lutz's daughter began spending all her time in her room playing with a, an imaginary friend. This is different from the movie. I don't think it was this in the movie, but... There's been just, a couple movies, though. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah, anyway. Um, she described it as a red-eyed pig called Jody. Oh, that's which not terrifying. You hear Jesus all about in, like demonic symbolism, like pig, red eyed pigs are like. Gives me the fuck. I never knew that. Yeah. Um, who could transform not only shape but size? Um, Jody also claims she could not be seen by anyone unless she wanted them to. The pig. Yeah. The pig with red eyes. The pig with red eyes. Yeah. 
I'm gonna fry that motherfucker up for bacon. Like seriously, like if if any of my children ever came up to me and like told me like, well, yeah, that's I I'd be even, like, bye bye. But but like seriously, like I don't, I can't even, I don't even know what I would do because that's just that is not a wild imagination. That is somebody that's like, no. you're seeing some shit, and we need to take you to the hospital. Yeah, seriously. I just saw Colonel's should, ear in the cor- in the yeah. corner of my eye, and it freaked me out. It was the it pig. was moving. <laughs> It was the pig. So um, mysterious foul odors would um, emanate from different locations of the house. You like sulfur and stuff? Like just nasty, like, I don't know if it's sulfur, but. I've heard like sulfur like, is a gross. big one. And just like it's rancid, nasty, and, like nasty rotten eggs. Yeah. Meat, like rancid meat, I heard too. Um, black stains appeared on the toilets and ceramic fixtures. Um, Kathy was touched by an. Oh my God. That's I crazy. know. I was like. <laughs> Her hair just went on. I know. <laughs> Kathy was touched by an unseen force and a green gelatin substance would appear throughout the house. What? Like the upside down. Like, it's like the upside down, like fucking, um, what was it called? Um, Ghostbusters? Yeah, Ghostbusters with the, he, he was the green slime monster. Yeah. Slimer. Yeah. Slimer. Um, also, you know about that, you know that sewing room I was talking about? The one they didn't want anyone to sleep in? Yeah. Uh, well. Well. Let's talk about that. So, hundreds of flies appeared in the sewing room, despite gross. it being the dead of winter. Yeah. George disgusting. would wake up nightly at 3.15 a.m., which coincided with the time the police felt the Defoe's were murdered. Ooh. That's another thing. So, George also woke up one night to witness his wife transform into a 90-year-old hag. The next night, she began levitating off the bed. Mm. The Lutz family tried on numerous occasions to contact a Catholic priest during this time, but only to find the phones would cut out whenever they would try to call anyone. I, I, I just don't even understand. Even at this point, they're like, you know what? We should go. Like, I don't even understand how they They're like, f- we got to make this work. It was $80,000 and we're in a mansion. We had to fucking stick this shit out. It was a steal. It was a bargain, Barbara. So the final night was reported to be the worst. Banging and rappings as loud as marching bands um, emanated throughout the house. Furniture was being moved by its own accord, and the children were being terrorized. Ew. After 28 days in the Defoe home, the family claimed they could take no more. Finally. Finally. Ugh. During the investigation, Ed, um, so they called in Ed and Lorraine after they had moved out. Right. Um, so during the investigation, as Ed was physically pushed to the floor while using some religious um, provocation in the basement. Okay. Lorraine was also overwhelmed by a sense of demonic presence and was plagued by her psychic impressions of the DeFeo. Sorry, I keep saying DeFoe. DeFeo family's bodies laid along the floor covered in white sheets. She also had a sense of be- physically being pushed back. Sick. The research team also captured an image of the spirit that appeared as a little boy peering from the second floor. Uh, there's a picture of it Ooh. that I saw. Um, and then the land was also found to be used by a man named John Ketchum, which his name is in the, the movie with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, it's like I don't think I saw the Ryan Reynolds one. I saw the I saw the well, I saw the conjuring. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll talk about that. Too. Yeah. The conjuring was the one that was kind of based off of them. Amityville horror is fucking good. It is. I oh, oh you mean the movie? The movie, yeah. yes. Um, so John Ketchum was a practicing black magician and had a cottage on the <laughs> land prior to the construct of the Dutch colonial in 1924. He had a cottage and he practiced magic in it. Black magic. Oh, not like <laughs> not not like fucking no, rabbits not set like a, David, out of top hats. Yeah, not David Copperfield magic. Black magic. That's a even, black magician. <laughs> a practicing black magician like black magic. Like. <laughs> Do you get it? Black magic, the, the scary guy. I got it. I got it. Voodoo. Um, John requested that his Ooh. remnants be buried on that property, and they s- remain there to this day. Ew. Get him out of there. That's disgusting. Get him out. That's gross. Also, the Shinnecock Indians at one time, I'm assuming that's how you say it, Shinnecock. Shinnecock. Um, also at one time had an enclosure on this land that was used to house the sick, the mad, um, and the, they were also there, they were left there to die. That was oh, also on this property. that's like the, what's it called house off of, um, on, in Denver. What? Denver, Park? In Cheeseman Park where they had that, like, that little, like, it was like that sick house where people were, go with, like the measles and shit, they essentially like left them there to die. Remember oh, that? No. It was like, well, it was the top of the. Never mind. Okay, go on. 
Was it like a little cabiny thing? It was like a cabin, and then like, but they tore that down. But that's where like a bunch of sick people like went. And they just were abandoned by I their families. Know that. Yeah, gross. Anyway, go on. Dude, I probably encountered some ghosts the night I was in Cheeseman. You probably sure. were dancing around in the floating. flowers with them. Yeah, they were like, "Leave this bitch alone. She's yeah. fucking high She's as fuck." On a way different level than we are. She is. I was definitely on a different plane that yeah. night. You made Slackjaw run away. I did. He was like, eh, "I gotta go. I gotta go." Um. So the Warrens believed that the suffering there had left the property with a very negative energy and a dark history, obviously. No and shit, Sherlock. Such a negative history was a magnet for demonic spirits. Demonic spirits. Um, and the preternatural, which I had no idea what the fuck that was, so I looked it up. What? Preternatural just means what beyond what is normal or natural. Preternatural. Preternatural? Preternatural. So the Warrens re- retrieved a handful of the Lutz's earthly possessions and deed for the property. And the Lutz sold the rest of their belongings and relocated to California across the fucking country. Yeah, because they're like, we're going to get like, away from bye this. Bye-bye. Bye, I'm getting away from this bitch. So it was once purchased for 80000 in 1975, but sold for 950000 in 2010. But it's on the market again. It's yeah. like... what. Why would they why bulldoze they that? that a museum? Why would or they like, just yeah. bulldoze that shit? Yeah, like, get it out of there. All right, now it's time to talk. Oh, there have been no further reports of activity from recent residents, though. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So let's talk about Annabelle. Ugh. So according to the Warrens report, a 28-year-old nurse who received the doll as a gift noticed that it started to change positions. Perfect. <laughs> then she and her roommate started finding parchment paper with written messages saying, like, help me, help us. And the girls said that they didn't even have parchment paper in the house. Oh, perfect. It was a crafty oh little crafty little doll. Yeah. Next, the doll started showing up in different rooms and leaking blood. Unsure of what oh. to do, the two women turned to a medium who said the doll was being occupied by the spirit of a young girl named Annabelle Higgins. I don't understand like why it's like unsure what to do. Throw it away. It's burn it. Come back. No. Yeah, burn it. Jesus Christ. That's when Ed and Lorraine Warren took an interest in the case and contacted the women. After evaluating the doll, they came to the immediate conclusion that the doll itself was not, in fact, possessed, but manipulated by an inhuman presence. So it's like, isn't that what that means? Yeah, I feel, I remember hearing a little bit about that. that it was like it was tricking the girls. And so it was if it was if they didn't by helping it or something like that or interacting with it it allowed the demon to come through it was very weird oh uh, okay i don't really understand it i don't know witchy talk me neither also ed said he was apparently attacked he was attacked by the doll at can one you point. M- <laughs> no dude it just flies across the room at you well only because oh my god why am i okay, talking about this only because like i'm scared because it's not like because you've seen the movie Annabelle, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. no, okay. So it's not like that evil looking doll. It's like a ra- it's a, ra- a raggedy. It literally ant- is a raggedy. It's a raggedy and doll. doll. So I can oh, I can't imagine. <laughs> I just imagine like a comedy sketch if somebody I used like to throw a raggedy and doll my sister all the time. Right, like just like somebody like it's like no, and it just like kind of goes like just kind of like pops on you and just falls back. Like what is it gonna do? Like it's just it, it's funny Bitch. to me. It's, it's like somebody, probably a little harder than that. It's like somebody like throwing like a very lightweight like mid sized pillow like that over there. At you and just going, take that. Like, Except that it's demonic. Okay, well. Shay, I would be scared. I don't care what you're I, saying. It would you still would scare me, it. but it's also hilarious at the same time. That's true. But go on. Who knows? Maybe it had razor blades in its eyes. Maybe. I don't know. So the next story we're going to talk about is um, the Perone family, which is the movie The Conjuring. And this true inspired story. Yeah, what is it inspired by? I thought it was inspired by the Amityville horror. No. Those are two different stories. Really? The Conjuring's a different story than Amityville. Okay. Yeah. Noted. So the story was inspired by the paranormal events which centers um, on the true life Perron family. Or per- Perron? They claimed that they lived with both friendly and sinister spirits in their Rhode Island farmhouse. Rose. Represent Rhode Island. That's where my, half my family lives. Except it's full Except, of ghosts. Except, oh, yeah, there's some old, crazy, mm-hmm. awesome houses over over there gross so january 1971 the perone family karen and roger and their two five their two five daughters they're two of their five daughters they're two fifths <laughs> they of the daughter they left the three uh back in the state i don't know in the car in the they car. left him in the car with the windows up <laughs> it was a little stuffy her 
Never mind. So they moved to a large <laughs> farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island. Um, the family noticed strange occurrence happening right away. No shit. That just got worse over time. Oh, but nope, it we're going to stick it out. with a missing broom, but that could have been anyone. Um, and then escalated into full-fledged angry spirits. Uh-huh. In researching the home, Carolyn claimed to discover that the same family owned it for eight generations, during which time many died by drowning, murder, or hanging. Oh, um, great. And when the Warrens were brought in, they claimed the home was haunted by a witch. Through oh. the research, it was discovered that Bathsheba Sherman had lived in the house in the early 1800s. This Miss Sherman was a Satanist who oh. had killed her daughter as a sacrifice to the devil. Jesus. So that's sweet. The things that went on there were just so incredibly Lovely. frightening, Lorraine recalled. The Warrens made frequent, frequent trips to the house, but unlike the movie, they didn't perform an exorcism. There was, though, a seance with the Warrens. Okay. The family promptly moved out of the house in 1980. How long did they stick it out for? So they moved there in 71. So <laughs> nine fucking years. Jesus They're Christ. Insane. So. Stupid. Um, I went out there day one. Day one. Gone. So, yeah. So one of the things. Uh, I just want to talk about one little crazy. The craziest artifact in their occult museum. Uh, okay. That's not Annabelle. They have okay. a lot of weird ass fucking shit. Right. But there is one artifact in there um, that is this creepy ass. Like it kind of looks like weird cement paper mache looking weird like creature thing okay. and it was an idol used by satanists in the woods oh. um and they found it and it threw lorraine up 25 feet in the air oh causing her to go into a catatonic state but let's just keep it in our basement yep, it sounds like a good idea hopefully our daughter can go play with that later hopefully no one touches it jesus and gets the the jeepers creepers yeah, I'm going to bang in like our fucking ceiling of our basement floor. Don't mind yeah. me just playing with the idol. Yeah, so that was a pretty crazy thing. Um, but so let's just talk about what they're doing now, shall we? Aren't they dead as a doornail? Well, Ed Warren's <laughs> dead as a doornail. Um, I don't think Lorraine is. She, she is. Still alive. She is? Mm-hmm. So Ed Warren died on August 23rd, 2006. Um, and Lorraine Warren... I guess died in April 2019. <laughs> yeah. I guess I didn't look that up. It's fine. Um, but she retired shortly after his death. She, she I don't blame did her. remain a consultant to the New England whatever. What is it? The New England uh, system. Of, Packers. What was it? <laughs> what does the S stand for? Damn it. I Scary supernatural. They. Whatever. Whatever, Margaret. It's fine. Okay, anyways. So she was still a consultant at the place that they found it that I can't remember the full name. The New England Center for Ants. Perfect. <laughs> um, the New England... <laughs> no, I'm giving that. Scientific Psychic Research Center or something. Anyway. With an S. Center with an S. Yeah. With an S. Center. <laughs> Scientific, I ended up saying. That's an S. Um, also, because I didn't know she died... <laughs> Nowadays, Lorraine Warren hosts an evening held party at her home in Connecticut. She probably still does. She let's probably, be uh, let's be honest, she probably still does. So, several times a month, guys. So, yeah. she go on down. She still does. Yes. Um, it consists of her entertaining the intimate crowd with true ghostly tales, a walk through the local cemetery to visit Ed's grave, a tour of the famous haunted room in her home that houses demonic and haunted objects from their many cases around the world. And a dinner in an Italian restaurant. <laughs> well, she probably does all those things. Even the Italian part. It said it's always it was always sold out, so look I don't... for future events. But you get you can't <laughs> you can't look for them anymore because they don't run anymore. From guys. here to eternity. It's so, fine. Oh whoops. That's about all I got. Well, that was On a good Ed one. And Lorraine Warren. I like it. I liked it. It was uh they have good movies. They inspired a lot of those crazy things. They... And they saw a lot of crazy shit. I did I, I i don't think i would put those artifacts in my house but that's just me um no is this sure if like your kid could get at them that's stupid i think yeah. in, like i think like in the conjuring there was like one where she like got down in there and they were like i don't know 
It was weird. Oh, yeah. That movie's scary. I yeah. decided to buy that movie because I'm scared. The Conjuring? Yeah. Ew, gross. You only have to watch it once. I know. The Conjuring 2 was pretty good. I bought it because it was $5 and me and Chris really wanted to watch a scary movie, but there are oh. no good ones at Redbox or on Netflix. No, but Conjuring, like I actually think they actually did take elements though of Omniville because there was like the flies everywhere in The Conjuring and although, do you remember, do you remember the movie at all? Yeah. So that was probably actually one of the most freakiest things when they had like the ghost like behind you. Oh yeah. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. Ooh. Every single time. Oh, I still can see it. It's gross. Yeah. What did I, I didn't, yeah, that movie was fucking fucked up. I didn't like it. But they had, like, the, like, yeah, like, that sewing room and that stuff. Yeah, you should watch Amityville Horror. It's fucking creepy as fuck. I, and Ryan Reynolds is still hot as fuck. He's hot as fuck. As no, he's it, creepy as shit. But. Not the whole time. Not the whole time? Just most of the time. Just. When he I'll, kills his family. Oh, perfect. He kills his family. Got it. Well, uh, No. I don't want to watch it, so it's fine. Okay, sure. Spoiler alert. Don't do it. <laughs> um, Sweet. Well, that was a good one. That's about it? Some good paranormal. I yeah, like please it. tell me about something happy now, so I stop thinking about it. Oh, I'll tell you about something happy, because you've already heard it, but I'll say it again. All right. What is it going to be? I wonder. Okay, so. Here we go. We're going to try this again. Are you and recording? I am recording. I, know, I was recording last recording. time. <laughs> I'm just going to like immediately take this and dump it onto my computer instead of trying to work on it like a little like fucking hamster? idiot. Hamster? Like, yes, <laughs> like a hamster. Just like a hamster. You know how hamsters do when they work the grind all day. Just running around on that goddamn wheel. Oh, speaking of hamster wheels, did you know they make hamster wheels for fucking cats? No, you can but literally get, get a one? giant fucking hamster wheel for your goddamn cat or Shih Tzu or small, small dog. Is it so the eagles don't come and pick them up? I don't fucking know, but you can literally stick it on your wall or something, and it's for cats, what? and it's a hamster wheel for cats. Okay, first of all, I thought you meant like a hamster ball, like you know, you put them in like the ball, oh, God. and then they, <laughs> you can like. I was like, how does that work that they wouldn't get picked up by eagles? But whatever, I'm just going to go with it. Do you let eagles in your house, Shay? Um, I was like, I don't think it'd really work if they were just trying to run on it like a giant I, wheel I appreciate, down the street. I appreciate that you know me enough that you're like, I'm just going to just go past over it because she's not saying correct words, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought you meant like you put it on like a hamster wheel, like a hamster ball. Like is, those things you can you churn ice cream in now? The balls. What are you talking about? They're, anyways, they're a hamster wheel. That's like literally a plastic ball. You put it together and they just run around in a circle. No, it's not like that. Okay. Yes, like but a like. wheel. Yes, but so you can like, you can put it on the wall and it's like a little treadmill for them so they can get exercise. Yep. My cat would just like lay in it. They'd That's be like, would do. fuck this. And only if I can get it in like, like the obnoxious like hamster cage colors, like, like the fucking see-through neon. like neon yellow and red yeah. just like that nasty plastic that's like once it pees on it it's gonna smell like that forever yeah ex- Ooh, gross i would put it right down that stairwell i know you keep pointing over there you yeah. know you have the I know, perfect spot i know exactly where i'd put it and then he would lay in it and like this is nice and cool on my tummy i'd fucking try to do that too I- bad cats are like 15 pounds <laughs> Are they? How? Well, how much does a cat weigh? My dog weighs no, 100. So. 15 is like a fucking big ass cat. He's probably like 10. 10. Buddha is probably like, she's kind of big. She's probably like 20 fucking pounds. <laughs> she's a big cat. She's a big bitch. She's a fucking big bitch. She's a fat cat. Yeah. Well, she doesn't do and anything. She likes to hide all day in her yeah. fucking little carpeted yeah. hotel. Rooms. No. Yeah. She just she just eats and then she goes from the bed. Like I said, like one of these days I'm gonna go like I haven't seen Buddha for a week. What's that smell? Yeah, mm. seriously. Do you yeah. do you see your cat? Yeah, she comes out for me. Yeah, she'll be laying on the bed. She'll, she says, She so, comes out for me. Yeah, she sleeps. She never gets under the bed unless somebody comes. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. She sleeps in your bed? Mm-hmm. Oh, you hold her hand, I forgot. I don't hold her hand. That is not me. I think that you secretly do. Shay. I don't because she would just be like I've tried, okay? I know. Shut up. She just can't handle it. <sighs> she can't handle it. You should my try love. to hold Leroy's hand. Oh, I don't want to lose my hand. So, no, I'm good. But thank you for the offer. Okay, so let's try this again. 
I'm talking pop culture again. Oh, are you? What's your uh, What's your topic? I am doing the awesome pop culture of Friends. <gasps> My f- e- mine and everybody's favorite. Yeah, don't act surprised. I'll be there for you. Yeah, but I wasn't there for them. When the rain starts to pour. Wow. Okay, I'll just stop with that. Shutting my eyes and it's like I'm there. I was on. I was thinking of a song I wanted to sing in this by myself one day, but I forget it now. So you'll remember, and then you can do it. And I'll let you rift. I was telling Chris I was I was gonna make an album on your computer while you, you sh- weren't there. You should. And That'd he was like, amazing. "You should make it on my computer. I have Garage Band." I was like, "You're <laughs> right." Holy shit! I have that Garage Band. We have like. Just he does not-, not talk like that, by the way. He talks just like that. He doesn't talk like that at all. I'm sorry. It's okay. He doesn't listen. It's yeah. He's got too much things to do. It's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So, friends. It was created by David Crane and Marta Kaufman, which aired on NBC from September 22nd, 1994 to March 6th, 2004. And it lasted for 10 whole seasons. 10. And I don't, like last week, I don't think a synopsis is needed, considering everybody and their fucking mother probably watches Friends. But if you didn't watch Friends, it's essentially about how six friends lived together in Manhattan and really they had jobs but they didn't really have jobs because all they did was sat at a coffee literally, house. Literally they never They never went. Which one time actually went. Joey addresses that and he's like well maybe every all your like because they talk about how much their bosses hate them and then Joey's like well maybe your bosses hate you, hate, hate you guys because you're hanging out here at the coffee house I know, at Joey's 2 o'clock the in the afternoon. Worked. Yeah. Joey's the only one that like ran off to auditions and shit like that. And we actually saw him going Yeah, off. Although Rachel did. She was the only other one. We saw Monica a little bit here and there. And but she then, would sit down on the job. Yeah, all the time. All the time, Rachel. Yeah. But anyway, so... Also, Monica, there's no way she was a chef in New York City. No fucking way with all that time on her hands. Right? That was... No I, fucking way, Monica. <laughs> like, what do you, you mean? You only yeah. go in for like three hours? Maybe, and you have maybe, every maybe night tw- and weekend off? Maybe twice a week? <laughs> That's bullshit. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, I don't think a synopsis needed, but that was pretty much a synopsis. It's about six friends. Blah, 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 blah. So. Three girls, three boys. Three boys. Three, three boys. Three girls, three boys. Three globules. They lived in Manhattan. Three and you, globules. we got to watch their little adventures happen. Um, And everybody and their mother fell in love with them because, like, everyone wanted to live in New York because they made it look so amazing. As it, like so attainable. Like, and even, like, fucking Phoebe, where she was, like, a massage therapist living in, like, that beautiful, by herself, in, not in a studio apartment in Manhattan. It was probably haunted. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she anyway. She probably to the spirits. She probably did. What was that painting that she made with the mannequin oh, yeah. coming out of it? Gladys. Gladys! Gladys. You gotta ah! love Gladys. I fucking love Gladys. <laughs> anyway. Okay, the casting process for this bad boy. Okay, so Ross was actually always going to be David Schwimmer. Um, the writers actually wrote the character of Ross specifically for him. So um, there was never any, um, like, they, yeah, he was just already, like, nobody was ever, like, there was no audition held for Ross. Ever. Um, Courtney, you had to act surprised. they, like, know David Schwimmer? <laughs> um. <laughs> I was trying to think of the question I wanted to ask. <laughs> She's such a liar. Um, the, I I don't know if like I think so one, the one of the writers didn't know David Schwimmer, so um, which I'm like, what did they, what was David Schwimmer in before Friends? Um, he was in the theater. Yeah, but yeah, so he was always so it kind of makes me think that his personality is kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Courtney Cox was originally going to be Rachel, but she wanted the role of Monica because she thought she was like a stronger character in this. Not like that she had like more lines or anything, but just like she thought that she wasn't like because Rachel, like when you watch like the first couple seasons, she is kind of like this weak, meek little thing that she just, just has no like she had so insecure. She was so insecure. She just didn't know. She was so naive. She was like your kids today where they just didn't have any like those skills to take care of themselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um. So anyway, so and so after her audition, the producers did agree like, OK, yeah, you can you can be Monica. You are definitely you hold that energy. Um, you imagine her being Rachel. That would no. be so weird. No, it would uh, not have been the same. It would have been Wouldn't weird. Wouldn't have been as popular. No, no. Wouldn't have worked. So Aniston Perry and Kudrow were cast based on their auditions. Um, but when LeBlanc auditioned for Joey, he took the character in a different direction. And, and the producers actually didn't even really want him. 
Um, but the network forced their hand because they really wanted him. So, um, but thank God because like I think it's fucking it, Joey. W- it was Joey. I mean, he there. I don't. I can't imagine that ensemble without him. Um, at least without Matt LeBlanc playing Joey. Um, let's see. Um, when Friends was uh, first uh, broadcast, everyone was actually saying it was like just a copycat of Seinfeld, um, because Seinfeld I yeah. think was going out. Friends came in in ninety four. Seinfeld I think signed off in ninety six. Really? Um, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So, um, they, everyone was like, um, so, but they were comparing it to Seinfeld that essentially, a sh- so it's a show about nothing. Um, and so there was actually like SNL skits that were like, they were asking, I think the cast of friends either were on it or whatever. Cause I guess since NBC was connected, I think mm. like the cast was on it. So they were trying to promote that show, like cross promote it. Wasn't Seinfeld NBC? And yeah, so oh, okay. I think this, like, so there was, like, bits that, like, the SNL cast had written mm. that were, like, when, when they were trying to promote their show, they're, like, oh, so it's, like, Seinfeld. Because mm. it's, like, they're, like, no, it's not. They're, like, no, it's pretty much Seinfeld. You guys are just copying Seinfeld. I'm um, but look those up. Yeah, but obviously, like, they have their own identity after that. Um, like, like, tenfold. Um, yeah. The series boasted being the first true ensemble show. The cast members made efforts to keep the ensemble format and uh, not. I feel like that can't be true though, because like Cheers, but like, like first, like in the sense, like they mean like, um, they didn't allow like like one member over the other to dominate. So it was truly I like an ensemble. True. Like if you really looked at Cheers or like, like it, it was like they all were like one. It wasn't like one character, but even at the same time, like you could kind of. What about Golden Girls? Well, that's true. They're I all mean, pretty. That's true. Well, but, the grandma. I right. I don't know. Anyways, but sorry. they all been a challenge, right? They all tried to like try to make conversation. They all tried to like kind of be equal to one another. But I mean, I feel like obviously. J- Joey and Phoebe's character I don't feel like were as developed as Monica Rachel or uh, Ross or Chandler yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah but I think they tried to I feel like Joey kind of made his whatever way but like they, that was truly like an ensemble where you saw them every single week no one was really ever left out you You're know right. what I mean mm-hmm. so in all like if you really think about it that's kind of I feel like a they lot of shows yeah they were always times. they were always centered um, like there may have been like a major fight or, or major thing going on, like especially like with Ross and Rachel or Monica and Chandler, but mm. they all were all they were always there. Like it mm. wasn't just like Monica and Joey were there as supporting oh, characters. Chandler's doing crack again yep. in the fucking bathroom for seven months. Stop him. Just kidding. Um but are you but though? I'm not. Yes. It was Coke. <laughs> it was yeah. Pails. Be correct. Those pails. Uh, Got him. <laughs> they not no more. Not no more. I hope not. I don't even know. They enter- Matthew Perry, are you still doing pills? Let us know. <laughs> At 30-ish. Right? Hashtag 30-ish. Um, they entered themselves in the same acting categories for awards, opted for collective salary negotiations, and asked to appear together on magazine cover photo shoots in the first season. The cast members also became best friends off screen, so much so that recurring guest star Tom Selleck reported that he sometimes felt left out. Um, poor Tommy and his poor big old mustache. Richard, he was like, "We just have to go eat our lunch alone over here." Um, me and my mustache. Mm, yeah. So each twenty-two episode, I'm sorry, each twenty-two minute episode took six hours to film, uh, twice the length of most sitcom tapings, mainly due to the several retakes and rewrites of the script. A like, sitcom usually only takes three hours. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, they like, make so much money, right? It's ridiculous. I mean, I'd want to. I mean, that's sweet. And then you have a reoccurring role for at least, you right. know, steady job. For a minute a while. for like 10 years. It didn't suck. Yeah, no. Um, so. Uh, when I listened to was so I listened to because um, you turned me on to this. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Um, which you should listen to the Mila Kunis episode. It's adorable. Oh, yeah. Um, but the Lisa Kudrow one, because I guess they were like long time like pals they like they met um in new york when they were first getting like kind of out her there conan. yeah her and conan o'brien and they actually they met in um in an improv class so they've been friends for like a long long time i like, just feel like conan's so much older than her sorry conan i love you i don't know i, I don't think They're that he is he totally they must be like similar age i just yeah don't know it's anyway. his tallness isn't it 
It's because he also always looks the exact same. Yeah, he has. I feel like he life. hasn't like looked any different since 1989. He's still, he's still growing. He's still like a. He's gonna be seven. He's gonna not seven. He's gonna be like seven feet, ten foot tall by the time he passes away. They're gonna have to give him seventeen coffins. There. I don't know why they would give him baby coffins, but <laughs> Jesus they might. Christ. Anyway, so um. During that podcast, she actually confessed she thought she was going to get fired the first week of filming because the writers and producers were trying to validate why would Phoebe be <laughs> in this friends group. But it obviously worked out. But, like, um, they were trying to, like, validate why she would be in. And she finally, you know, said to Conan, like, they kind of agreed, like, if, if these friends aren't making fun of her behind her back or mocking her or rolling their eyes, then it works. And it does work. Um, and we all have a friend like that. Yeah. It's me. But, um... But yeah, I mean, it's, it, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's just interesting that she just thought she was going to get fired the entire time. Um, so Meanwhile, she's like, well, sh- they're all a favorite character of. Yeah. The shul, but. The shul. She's like, I mean, you can't fucking replace Phoebe. You can't replace Phoebe. And you can't like. She was, she was, she it was really funny that. because you say that because she um, actually said to Conan as well. She was like, she got. There was like, cause there's been so many rumors of like the friends, like the like it getting like back together, cause like all these reunion shows are happening, and it was like another one of those things where it was a rumor, and she actually thought it was real, and then she got so offended because not only did she think it was real, they thought that she she cause she, she didn't get like a call, she, they then thought like she then thought like she didn't get invited to it, so she got so offended and so butthurt, oh, and they're my. like, no, it's not real. Oh my god! How but she funny. was like, how could they? I guess I mean that's just how that goes. Like I guess if they just oh. didn't invite me. Like it was, it's you should listen to it. It's pretty funny. Oh my god, Phoebe, she's so adorable. Lisa Kudrow. Lisa's adorable. Um, so you know what so, movie I love that she's in? Hmm. Hanging up. Oh, that was with, a good one. Yeah, with Diane, uh, Diane Keaton, Keaton and, and Meg Ryan and Walter Matthau. Mm-hmm. Anywho, go on. That was a good one. So fucking good. And that giant. That was his last Saint film. Bernard I think. Dog that they had. Yeah, I think that was his last film too. No way. No, it wasn't. Yeah, that was close to when he died. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. He did like grumpier old men after that. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about grumpy old men. I don't know. When did he die? Anyway, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out later. I'll do Walter Matthau on the next nostalgia. (laughs) There you go. Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace and Grumpy Old Men. The end. Um, And hanging up. So some random shit you guys might may or may not know. Um, so in their original contracts for the first season, cast members were paid uh, twenty two th- about twenty two thousand dollars per episode. The stars were paid um, for six hours. Yeah, and this was for the God. first season. Um, so this is like back in ninety four per episode. That's so bad I, fucking ass, right? So next year, that's what I'm gonna make. There you go. Every six hours. Every six hours. How um, am I gonna make? I'm it's gonna like a dollar an hour. No. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, a second, bitch. Right. Let's see. Um, the stars were paid seventy five thousand dollars per episode in season three, eighty five thousand in season four, ten a hundred thousand in season five, a hundred and twenty five thousand in season six, seven hundred and fifty thousand in season seven and eight, and one million in seasons nine and ten, making Aniston Cox and Kudrow the highest paid T V actresses of all time, and I think that still stands today. Which is They're insane. like, yeah, this is the last, the first and last time we're doing this. Yeah, like, whoops. Do you think people get paid that much now? I doubt it. There's no way. There's no way. Well, the other problem is, too, like, not like, I, I don't know. The Simpsons have been going for 35 years. I know. Well, how much do they get paid an episode? They're like, we don't care. You can pay us $20,000 per episode. We'll be just we're fine. fine. This is job security. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Um, crying all the way to the bank. Um, all uh, so, um, Although the writers originally planned... Like a um wait, I'm sorry. So the the blah, 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 the writers originally planned the big love story to be between Joey and Monica, the idea of a romantic so weird. right the idea of a romantic interest between Ross and Rachel emerged during um the period when Kaufman and Crane wrote the pilot script, which I mean honestly like seriously like thank God like can you imagine can you imagine no Monica and Joey no that doesn't no. It's just interesting. So it's just, it is interesting. But it was okay that him and Rachel had a little fling. No, but even then. Oh my God. So I'll get to that in two seconds. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I don't it's know a what surprise. you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, like, wait a minute. Um, It probably would have gone the same, like, it w- It probably would have gone something like, um, 
when Rachel and jo- with like the Rachel and Joey storyline, which the entire cast actually like re- like reportedly hated, like they hated it. Really, like everyone else was like, "This isn't right." Well, which, I'm I'm glad which, it was short lived because it was like, okay, this is a was, little too much fucking love weird. fucking triangle. But at the same time, like I kind of feel bad for Joey. Like both like were like, ew, he would have worked with Monica. Like ew, he didn't work with Rachel. Like, I love Joey. He was hot as fuck. He but was, but it didn't wasn't, work. It wasn't right. But I don't think it would have even worked for him and Phoebe, even though that they would have like you know. Yeah, we everyone always wanted that. Yeah, but but it also wouldn't have, wouldn't have been weird. But it yeah. was always like that. Her and her and Paul Red were perfect. Thing. Yeah. And I actually kind of like that they gave Phoebe like a like a boyfriend like that because yeah I felt like she ma- it made her number one more relatable and she was in way more storylines toward the end because of Paul Rudd I feel mm-hmm. like and so he was a great addition she, to the cast I thought he was fantastic he's the best he's he's just fucking hilarious um so the series was criticized and for incorrectly depicting New York with the financially with oh my gosh with the financially struggling group of friends being able to afford huge apartments. Uh, Bright noted that the set had to be big enough for the cameras lighting and for, for like quote unquote, for the audience to be able to see what's going on. Um, the apartments also had to, the apartments also needed to provide a place for the actors to execute the funny scripts. So that's how they kind of like are like validating it. Like it's because we just had to be funny and you know, it's whatever. But everyone, I remember that being like, Everybody and their mother wanted to like fucking move to fucking New York and like and I I remember I remember um and I'm sure I probably said it at some point like I'm gonna move to New York and I'm I know my dad was like it's not like friends like Uh, automatically just like it's not like friends please don't go there because you'll live in like a fucking 380 foot square apartment and you can barely pay for rent and there's like a rat crawling on your leg and it's it's not like that I'm sure it's not yeah I'm I'm just kidding. But no, it's not. But like it got, it was like highly criticized for that. Like, and I, cause I'm sure there's a bunch of people that moved to New York at that time. And we're like, it's, this is, it's going to be just like friends. And we're going to have like this amazing apartment with like, you sit on fire escapes and you hang out with your friends, like at all hours of the day. And, and you watch your naked neighbor. Yeah. And you can, window. you can, I'm sure that happens. Right. A lot. And you can afford to like do whatever and you don't have to work any fucking hours. And so there was like a lot of like. That's not real life. Dude, but people, New York is people get people insane. get sucked into it. People really get sucked into it, and they really think that that's how it operates. The energy in New York is crazy. It is because, but because everyone's like on their fucking path. They're not like they're no. literally just like in their own little world. It is. Like, it's another world. It is true what they say. New Yorkers, New Yorkers are a very different breed. And but I mean, when I did go to New York, I've I went like a couple times when I like in my like kind of earlier 20s and stuff like that um and it but you, when you're there it's like you kind of felt like a like a bigger part of something it's like this big connection thing and i don't know if it's because there's like people on the streets all the time it's just a different kind of energy yeah and uh, everyone yeah because everyone's walking around together yeah. i mean you're it literally is. on a subway like in someone's armpit sweat right at all times but i was like i actually loved it i actually loved kind of being down you know in the subway and I don't know. I, I feel like I, I cried maybe twice when I was going on the subway, but why? that was just because I went the wrong way two oh, times. Gotcha. And I was scared because oh. one time I was, I was at night and I was mm. by myself and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. And my and the cell my cell phone didn't like work anywhere. Yeah. So you were like, oh, I'm gonna die. And then I was trying to use my GPS and it like wasn't like accurate because right. it just wasn't. I was good. just navigating everywhere by myself. Right. I actually, it's I loved really it. It was really fun and crazy I and actually, awesome. Yeah, I felt like I was like at home. It was weird. and But I mean, I could definitely. I felt t- like I was in another fucking country. Really? I felt so at home when I was there. I was like, I must have been in here. Like, I was like dizzy a, when I came home. I must have been like there in a past life or something. I, I also don't know. was like working while I was there slash oh, like. I was not fucking, working. <gasps> yeah. I have to be on my bed. Like I was cooking yeah. for that. Those people. Yeah. So that were, that's like, fair. I was not there during work. It was, it was, so I need leisure. to go back and just like leisure. Yeah. But the first day I got there, me and my friend um, hung out in Brooklyn because that's where she lives. That's cool. We had two separate dinners because everywhere's open late. And the first dinner we had was like on a boat in the Brooklyn, like fucking harbor. I don't know what you want that's to call That's pretty that. cool. And then the second one was at a sweet Italian restaurant that was like the size of your kitchen. That's badass. And yeah, I very cool. 
That's cool. I almost wore my I Love New York shirt today. I fucking should have. Damn, you should have. Anyway, get back to friends. Jesus, Jesus. That's all good. Um, So, um, Aniston didn't return for... Oh, oh, sorry. So, Aniston almost didn't return for the final season, stating that she wanted to leave on a high note, and she didn't know that how much Rachel she had left in her. She obviously agreed, but only to like a shorter season, which is why it was only 18 episodes instead of like the usual 24 or 25. I only want 18 million, yeah. I I'm guess. Like, what uh, a... Dude, if I was like... I guess. If I was like her cast, I'd be like, you fucking bitch. I, I would... You know, I... I'm not complaining. You don't have an in you for another fucking five million dollars. Right? Like, please. Like, five seriously. Ridiculous. I don't know. That's just me. But, I mean, yeah. I get it, fun. though. I get it from her point of view that she was just over it and she wanted to move on. And she was actually the most successful friend. Just, like, friend... Um, actress like out of the gate because she, she was, she was casted for those roles yeah and she was she i mean she was she was like having like a like p- kind of a big progressive movie career um so she was she didn't give a shit i mean she was probably getting paid more than that so for her it was like nothing compared to like for us it'd be like what the fuck what do you mean it was nothing i mean i'm sure she didn't think it was nothing but yeah. um it's sweet like when did you ever see like were the millers yeah so it's like did you did you watch the outtakes Mm-mm. So in the outtakes, um, it was like a scene like where they're like playing with, or they're fucking with the radio or something like that, and sh- they actually turn on the radio and it's "I'll Be There for You" by the Remembrance, the theme song, obviously, and they start singing to her and she's like crying and she's because she's like it's like so it just like it shows like oh so like I mean it's just that that show really means a lot to her so it's, it's fucking it's, better. It's also it's just nice that she you know that even though like it, this is a huge part of pop culture and it's it was a huge part of like. I mean, it's a phenomenon, essentially, and she is still humbled by it, and she mm-hmm. was crying, and, like, it was, like, you could see, like, all those memories in her, like, you should watch that outtake. You can see it all in her face, and it's Aww, really kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, she seems like a nice lady. Yeah, I have no idea. You never know with, you never know with You people. know what? I shouldn't say that anymore. You never know. Um, let's see. Hashtag return to Oh my leaving God. neverland leaving neverland never ever going back ever <laughs> okay so here's like a big reason why like friends is like p- part of pop culture so a study so the biggest thing was like a study held at the university of toronto proved how friends influenced the english language they investigated the way friends used influ- uh, intensifiers uh intensifiers that's weird use intensifier words like very really and so in its dialogue um, the study concluded that the intensifier so was used most throughout the series, leading it to become, leading it to, to its increase of use in the English language. Um, there's also like Phoebe's upspeak and Chandler's sarcastic inflection, which, I mean, that's a lot of people do that. And that's because of friends. Um, at least that's what the study shows. Mm. So, which I think is very, very interesting that, yeah. you know, people that have not even watched the show are influenced by friends because of everybody else around them mm-hmm. and the generations around them but i mean i guess it's like anything like each generation has their thing but yeah. friends is a big part of our generation where we influenced this generation and or they did and it's it's just interesting because i never thought about it but i guess no. it's when you really think about it you're like i guess it's kind of true people yeah, like, use like more but you hear like from like that valley girl and stuff like that and like mm-hmm. clueless yep oh clueless um, you also think about like the what's up thing. Yeah. That oh yeah. Was, like literally. Mm-hmm. And people still like they don't say they don't say it like that, but they still say like what's up. Yeah. Like right. people will still fucking say it like that. Right. But they like, still say what like, year is it? It's true. What year is it? But they still do. Um, that freaked me out for two seconds. What? Because I can kind of hear stuff in like my thing, but I heard like somebody think go like this. Oh, I did that. I okay, think. God, Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, I I'm gonna I watch. I heard it too. I'm just gonna like watch a nice show before I go to bed tonight. Um, yeah, I'm not watching Stranger Things tonight. No point in to start watching that. Um, but I'm not tonight. S- I'm catching back up on the second season because oh. I don't think I really watched. I think I fell asleep in like every episode, so I'm just rewatching that season. That's fair. Uh, friends um, also formed what we now call the hangout comedy. For 30 minutes a week, viewers got to chill in Central Park, Perk, um, the friends' favorite hangout, and watch the characters interact with each other using sarcastic comments. 
and hilarious one-liners. Um, Friends' con- uh, creation of the Hangout comedy helped build some of the foundation of the most uh, modern si- sitcoms we've enjoyed today. While um, while watching popular shows such as Big Bang Theory, Modern Family, New Girl, we continue to see how the group di- how the group dynamic is, is everything, especially in like How I Met Your Mother, which came out pretty like it was like on the heels of friends Mm. and they are a lot like that where but i mean i feel like almost their hangout spot was a little bit more on point even though i like friends better than how i met your mother but it was a little more on point than the central park where they were hanging out a bar Mm -hmm. and it's just it was like the bar was always crowded and they always switched seats and they always kind of were different where Mm. central park they were like always Always in that same same spot. spot Like, you can't get that couch every fucking day. There's no way. No, but they also explained that, too. I remember that was a good big controversy where I was like, oh, you know why? Because it said reserved on it. I'm like, fuck off. Like, that doesn't exist. Um, you can't reserve the couches you, every like day of watch, a coffee shop. If you watch Netflix, like, look on the, like, like in later seasons, you'll see, like, a little sign on the table and it says reserved on it. And that's how they explain that away. I'm like, whatever. It's That fine. was just, like, as a joke, Bob, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's not, yeah, but, whatever. Yeah silly they told me they told you they gave me a million dollars and they told me that's why you're sitting here it is um so one of the biggest actually things with uh, from the pop culture um aspect is rachel's haircut from like the f- i believe it was the second season oh, the um people are still talking about the rachel haircut which jennifer aniston sported on friends in earlier episodes However, it's coming back. Right? How it is actually. That and jellies. However, in 2011, Aniston confessed, I think it was the ugliest haircut I've ever seen. Later she had she, it forever though. But she didn't. Because, oh, I guess she yeah, didn't. I think it was the ugliest haircut I've ever seen. Later she even added how her stylist Chris McMillan was stoned out of his mind, quote unquote. Um, when he gave her what is known as one of the most iconic haircuts of all time. The one that was like kind of poofy up here in her yes. bangs. Mm-hmm. But then she was it just like a, a thousand hair, layer. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then she just like was a fucking hair guru for most women. It's like, true. It and she had like super simple. Yeah. The style was, the style has been copied by approximately 11 million women worldwide. That is ridiculous. Right? <laughs> Additionally, Aniston simply Can I did. the Rachel? Right, please. Additionally, Aniston. Um, simply didn't think that look suited her and it was a nightmare to maintain funny enough even though it was so popular it barely had lasted an entire season because it just had grown out she had like let it grow out so fucking fast oh. but she had to like she hated it because it was like a thousand different layers so she had to like yeah she had to like style it and round brush it and she, i guess her hair was really like was super like it was naturally wavy and coarse so it was just super hard to maintain so she fucking hated it um why did I do this? Yeah, a woman by the name. Give me a million dollars and I'll keep it going. I guess. Right. Um. By a woman by the name of Chris uh, Kelsey Miller wrote a book called "I'll Be There for You," where she researches the show and how it influenced its audience. Um. Miller d- uh dedicates a whole chapter on what happened on to TV after 9/11, adding that after the national tragedy, everyone kind of just stopped and had to recalibrate. Friends was in a really unique position and they handled it in a unique way. She said before the attacks happened, the show was probably going to wrap up after the next season. The audience was drifting away and it just seemed like it was just time to go. But afterwards, viewers came flooding back to it. She, which is probably I'm going to be watching Friends when I go to bed tonight because. Yeah, me yeah. too. Um, she said that most viewers were glued to the news and um, also glued to Friends because it was the New York. It was unchanged, familiar, and really good comedy. The show um, organically added tributes like New York Fire Department um, shirts and American flags in the background um, without adding the attack in the storyline, which that's true. They never they never once mentioned it. Not one time. Um, which I thought I they never didn't. really thought about it. Which maybe that's what people needed. They needed to escape, and they just needed to like laugh and just pretend almost like a little bit of normalcy was happening, and like yeah. it wasn't gonna break anybody. Um, which is funny because I remember that SNL episode when they finally came, like they stopped doing the news twenty four seven, and they finally went back. And I remember like Lauren Michaels doing his monologue and, and asking the mayor because the mayor was there, and I think he was hosting it, and he's like can we be funny because <laughs> it was just such like this egg show because we didn't know like we didn't know what was yeah. happening and so many people had died it was horrible um yeah so I, he was like he needed permission which i i kind of get like in a joking way i don't think he needed permission but yeah um so i think friends kind of rep- like kind of represented that as well um that's cool let's see 
Um, so they didn't add the they they didn't add the attack to the storyline, but um, just letting it represent pride of New York and its heroes at, at the time. They made it so the show would be there for them, <laughs> the <laughs> same way it always had been. She said. So wrap it up. So on May sixth of two thousand four, more than fifty million viewers reportedly tuned into the final episode of Friends, making one of the most watched TV finales in history, which I believe it ranks fifth. I'm pretty sure I watched it. I I know I watched it. Yeah. Um, I believe the all time one is Mash, which I think it ranks somewhere like a hundred sixty million viewers. Damn. But again, like that was back in like the seventies, <laughs> so. There was nothing to there do. There wasn't a lot of other. Well, there was. It wasn't that there was nothing to do. There was just not a lot of TV on. Mm. It was a quieter world back then. Um, yeah, they were just not poisoning the earth. And yeah, fucking seriously, reading books <laughs> by candlelight. Yeah, no. Yep. Um, they were, they were starting the poisoning. Yeah, for sure. Because they, <laughs> they didn't fucking know. They're like, it's they fine. Like, it's just we're just, money. We're just gonna like put all this tin, and we're gonna we're gonna. Just use aluminum foil and styrofoam and plastic, plastic. Mm-hmm. Let's just put weird shit in and there. We're not gonna recycle. My foot just scared me, Shay. My fucking foot. Oh my god, just scared me I because you're... I thought it was a ghost. You're gonna have to like listen to lullabies when you drive oh home. My god, I am. I'm sc- will you walk me to my car? I will. Okay, I'll hold your just hand. Sure there's not a demon in there. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, why did I say that? Don't Leave say that. You're gonna scare. Yeah, tell them to fuck off. Um, the show was nominated 211 times and had 72 wins. And that's, like, across the board for, like, award shows. And that includes, like, um, editing and lighting and, you know, ass wiping and all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, so because of si- all of it. So, because of the syndication revenue, Friends con- Friends continues to generate approximately $1 billion each year for Jesus. Warner Brothers. Isn't that insane? That translate into about 20 millions, 20, 20 millions, 20 million in annual res- residuals. I can speak um, each for Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, and David Schwimmer, who each get 2% of syndication income from friends. So they will always be okay. Always. Yeah, they're good. They are. Ne- they would. They don't even have to work a day in their life, probably. Unless, you know, you know they, like they, they show friends. unless they blew their money on booze and the hounds and the ponies and the goddamn pills. Who knows? I think yeah. they're doing okay. Yeah, I think they're. They're doing they're better. Doing quite all right. Yes. But anyway, so that was that again. Take two. It probably is a little more lackluster than last time, but that's okay. It's all right. I still enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And hopefully you do too. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, well, that was a good one. That was good. It was good. And hopefully this time it doesn't get all fucked up. Yeah, hopefully we can uh, save that one right. for next time. Yeah. Um. So I'll give my, are we going to roll? Yeah, we'll roll. I'm looking for mine. Are we going to roll? Okay, so I'll do my little spiel. Yeah. Do um, So if you don't already follow us on Instagram or that's about all we're on. Is that all we're on? Yeah, that is. So if you don't do that already, do it at 30ish, T-H-U-R-D-Y-I-S-H. Um... And, yeah, Sh- give us a little shout. Say what's up. Um, if you guys do follow us already, like, some of you guys have been doing this and we love it. When you, like, send us little comments about, like, oh, I was just listening and this part made me laugh. Or if you have any suggestions on where we should go for the field trip. Or also, if you have any suggestions on what we should call you guys, our listeners, we still haven't figured that out. Um, but yeah, you can just drop us a line. You can say, Hey, you guys are cool. Or you can say, Hey, that's, I don't know. Anyway. Speaking of that. Uh, we'll talk about our first. Oh yeah. You can review us on Apple and we did have our first review written for us. Do you guys want to hear it? (laughs) Let's read it out loud. (laughs) It's a. It's, I didn't read it out loud yet because I don't yeah, have Apple. My, my boss actually read it out loud to me. It was pretty funny. He was laughing at me. Um, it's on Apple and it's pretty fucking funny. We, we, you guys have been super sweet and have like reviewing us like with just like with the stars. But this guy, I believe, is the first guy that wrote. He like he he gave us one star, <laughs> and then, and then he wrote why he gave us one star. 
Um, stand by. <laughs> I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still laughing at it because it's so fucking stupid. I love it so much. Um, so if you're listening, whoever sent us this review, um, we're flattered. We are. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, his name's Gary. Um, Gary Weinthrop. Uh oh. It says you just cut me off in front of. Like, you just cut in front of me in traffic. One star. Nice sticker, though. <laughs> he didn't tell what... He didn't say which one? No, he didn't say... It was say probably me, let's be honest. That's adorable, though. <laughs> I think it's fucking hilarious. Nice sticker? I like that it was like a backhanded compliment, but I appreciate... I love... I, I just think it was hilarious that, again... <laughs> how? I just don't understand that... How much like effort somebody put just to just put something like it's not even hateful. Like I don't give a fuck. And he could like he could be just joking. I don't and I don't really care. I you can't take this shit personally. You can't no. take whatever. And I think that's it's fucking hilarious. It's just so funny that people go through all this effort just to like be like mean or whatever. I just think it's fucking hilarious. But I just love it so much. Like you just I was... cut in front of me. One star. But nice sticker. I like it. Um, but like I, trying to give like like actual critiquing whatever. It, it is going to keep me in check on my driving skills. Oh, my my uh, politeness when on the road. Right. Oh, my gosh. I think that it's just, is so funny. I just thought it was funny that that was our first review on there. So our first written review is we cut them I, off in traffic. I really wish that he would have wrote up uh, what car it was. Yeah. I bet it was me, though. What, Who like, knows? For real. Give me a little honk at least. Did you yeah, give me a honk, honk? I do get I get some honks sometimes because oh. I should probably start driving nicer <laughs> so people listen to the podcast. I just thought it was funny. Hate on it. I just thought it was funny. It is. It is funny. So yeah, if you guys want to tell us about our driving skills, you can do that too. You can totally do that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. That is so silly. Okay. All anyway, right. so you ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. You did your spiel. I did my spiel. Follow us on Instagram. Perfect. Rate us on iTunes. Tell us how our driving is. Yes, we really need to. Know should that. I write? Should I write that next to our podcast? All right, I'm going first. You're going. You're rolling. Mm. Oh, are you kidding? Crime? No, it's nostalgia. Uh, oh, nice. Are you joking? Okay, All right, can I get something different for cooking? Pop culture. Pop culture. Yeah, girl, get it. Okay. Dirty pop. Yeah. <coughs> oh, don't die. How did... <coughs> oh. You, you good? How did that make me cough so bad? I don't know. Dirty cough. I don't know. All right. Well, it's been real and it's been fun. It has been. And it's been real fun. It's been both those things in conjunction to make a compound word. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? Putting words and nouns in gender function. Okay. We probably should go. I'm just a bill. Anyway. All right. Thanks, guys. We love you. We'll see you next time on T to the H to the U L D Y I S H. That was pretty impressive. Maybe delete that. No. Okay, love you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.